Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how you can improve your research profile in five simple steps. So I'm actually going to talk about the five kind of academic profiles you should have where you should update all your research articles and conference articles and by doing that you can make a better visibility of your research and uh, create a bigger impact of your scientific publications and also be kind of get noticed in your research community okay so the first one is Google Scholar in my opinion actually all researchers should have a Google Scholar profile nowadays even when I submit an article uh, to a journal often uh, the editors they will check your Google Scholar to understand how is your how good is your research profile okay and of course you can create your Google Scholar profile here and if I click here let's see what happens it should take me to my research profile so here is my Google Scholar profile as you can see one good idea is to have some keywords here I will make another video showing detail about what you can do and what not in Google Scholar but just for now here you see this is how your Google Scholar should look like you should have your articles I only update my, update my journal articles in Google Scholar but of course you can do your conference articles, your technical reports, all kinds of academic work that you do. You can upload all of them here. For instance, if I just click here, you'll see chapter, thesis. So everything you can upload here. But I will upload mostly journal and book chapters. That's it. And here we can see my co-authors list. Okay, so and here my citation indexes, how they're growing. So I recommend all of you to have a Google Scholar profile. I think to create a Google Scholar you might need a institutional email address but maybe with other email addresses it could be possible but to have a verified email address you need a institutional email address so the second one is research gate again I recommend all of you to have a research gate profile okay so here is my research gate profile again you will see I have some introduction I have some keywords disciplines and in research gate I actually update uh, all my journal articles and some conference articles I don't really add all my conference articles in my uh, research medias uh, in my research profiles okay I I upload like some of them maybe one conference paper in a year something like that actually I don't publish in conference proceedings I only publish in journals but I present in conferences so I don't really update my conference presentation in in all my academic profiles I, I, I in my opinion actually conference proceedings does not add much value to your academic career so I don't publish in academy so I don't publish in uh, conference proceedings but here you see how your research gate profile might look like okay and here you will see that uh, yeah these are the type of things that you can upload data presentation poster preprint you can upload a lot of things and in experience here are my profile actually what I do where I work what are my educational background hours the journal I reviewed for these kind of things and yeah I'm not really going to discuss much about all these things I will make another video on this how to make a research kit profile the next one is ORCID okay so it is kind of a identifier ID for the researchers so many of the journals or in many of the other other websites you can actually synchronize your profile with ORCID and all the information you put in ORCID will be updated automatically in all those profiles so I really recommend everyone to having an ORCID profile so let me show you my ORCID profile so here is actually my ORCID profile and this is my ORCID number okay so this is what you get when you create an ORCID profile then you will get an ID like this okay so for every researcher there is a unique ID and here you can see my details you see I linked my Google Scholar research kit and LinkedIn here as well also I have researcher ID and a scooper's author ID so I have uh, linked them as well here but I don't I, you don't have to create all these things but these five that I'm going to talk today these are kind of the most important ones and here you see in my profile you see my employment history education my some positions that I hold in different academic communities um, yeah here are the membership and here are actually the awards yeah in the memberships I have done some funding in some projects and my research publications 
So this is what actually we can see and also my peer review activities. Actually, I do much more than this. In my Publons profile, you will see more. Even I do more, but sometimes I forget to just update my peer reviews in these uh, outlets. So the next one is to be active in social media networks, particularly LinkedIn and Facebook. So I recommend all of you to share your recent publications or interesting posts related to academia or your research work to share in LinkedIn and in Facebook groups. So here is my LinkedIn profile. Okay, here you will see my detail about what I do, what I teach, what um, I did consultancy for Transport Canada. So yeah. All these things were where I have trained my structural equation modeling. So these are the things you will see there. But most interestingly, what uh, when it comes to research, I, I would like to tell you that you share your publications. For instance, here you see I, I shared an, one publication and then just today I shared another one. So here I will quickly show you my post. So here it's a paper in the Journal of Cleaner Production. Then here today we shared a paper in the Journal of Maritime Policy and Management. Okay, so this is what I mean that you should actually share your uh, publications in your uh, professional and social networks. It increases the visibility of the article. You have, I believe, all the researchers have some people who are of professional interest in our uh, LinkedIn. Especially in LinkedIn, everyone is of professional interest. But also in our Facebook, we have some people who might actually get interested in our paper. So that's what is LinkedIn. I also do the same in Facebook. I share my, uh, my articles in Facebook as well. And the last one I would like to recommend is to create an academic website. So for some of you, you may say, oh, I don't have the technical skills to make a website. But you know, with sites, Google, Google Sites, you can make very easily a website of your own. You can just click here and see, have a look there. So all these five links, actually, actually four of them because the LinkedIn and Facebook are my own. So all these four links you will find in the video description below. So if you just click on this, you will see how it looks and you can uh, start building your website there just by dragging and clicking. You don't have to do anything. Okay, so I'll make another video on how to make a Google Sites for, for how to make a Google Sites for researchers but you can start trying here. I'm going to share this website of my front. Okay, so you see, when you make a website in Google Sites, so it will always come like this, sites.google.com and then your name, okay? So that's how it will come. It will not just come as like your name.com. So for that, you have to have the hosting domain and then you have to have some skills on making website, be it WordPress or some uh, uh, other uh, skills okay so for instance I have my website here zialmunim.com so that I build using WordPress and for that I had to spend quite some time and effort but I knew WordPress already I I, ha I had bought the domain and also I had the hosting and for this kind of um, websites you also needs to be willing to spend about 40 to 50 dollars a year okay for the maintenance for the hosting and the domain but with google sites it's completely free you can just create your google site but it will come as site dot google dot and then your name but here you see this is a very nice website you can put your publications you can put your research whatever is going on you can put your teaching profile okay so you can more or less put everything you want okay so you see you can attach your cv so this way you can make a website of uh, your own for free using Google Sites. So again, these are the five things I recommend all of you to have as a researcher if you're following us. And if you have any questions, just uh, put it in the comments below. I will try to reply to you as soon as I can. And I will make some dedicated videos for each of these, how to, how to really create and maintain all these profiles. So I'll make a short dedicated videos for each of them. And all these videos will be available in our course. We are designing a course on publishing and writing. The course will be available here on course.researchhub.org. So have a look on our website if the course is already available. 
and I recommend all of you to join the course and have a look on that and you will find the link to the course also below in the video description thank you for watching if you like the video please feel free to share with your friends and colleagues